Okay, today we're going to take a look at some gears that I had 3D printed in nylon. Not FDM 3D printed in nylon, but I, I believe it's an SLA service. Um, some sort of laser type thing. But uh, there were f four different types of gears that I had made. This one here, the white ones that you're looking at, and this small one here, this large one here, and this one here. It was a learning curve for me, but that's why I do this, and this is why I'm sharing this with you. The long and the short of this is, I used PCB Way, and as you, if you follow my channel, you know I've been testing many of their services because I'm just curious. I'm seeing all these YouTube channels talking about them, so I wanted to find out are they really any good. And I have used their printed circuit board surface in my uh, KD270 robot, and you can. If I think of it, I'll put a link down below to that, and you can take a look at the printed circuit boards that I had them produce for me. And I've also used them for clear, water clear parts for the body for the KD270 robot. I mean, it's just wonderful. I just love the way that thing looked. Turned out I've also had them do a uh, semi-flexible resin for a cage, small cage, lamp cage for a time machine project. I had them 3D print parts in aluminum for the large cage on the time machine engine. And so they've seen those videos and they, they contacted me and wanted to know if there was any projects I had going on that they might be able to assist with. And I went, great, finally someone who kind of wants to sponsor me. And I don't know if I call it a sponsor, but the point was they offered to do this job. I said, yes, I've got four different gears. I would love to see them 3D printed in nylon. So I sent the files up and uh, first thing their engineers wrote back and they said the files looked a little bit uh, rough, surface rough. And I opened them up and looked on my computer and I'll show you that here in a minute. They look completely smooth to me. And I had also 3D printed all the parts to make sure they would work here on my Bamboo Lab Mini. So I said, no, go ahead and just do them. So they just did them using the uh, same files that I ran here. Now, one thing that I typically do, no matter which one of my 20 different 3D printers I'm using, is in, when I'm working in the filament, depending on the brand of the filament, sometimes I have to oversize a hole to get it to, to fit just the way I want. So in the case of this little gear here, which goes on the stepper motor, you can see that it fits on there a little bit loose, but not bad. It's the further down I push it, the snugger it gets. My idea was I would eventually drill the actual part and put a 440 set screw in there and set screw it onto the motor. Well, I found that their, their system is so accurate, and I'd found this out on the projects that I had them do in the past, but it's actually quite a bit looser. So a set screw uh, will be added to this and uh, tighten it on down so that I don't have to worry about it uh, falling off. But um, I'm passing that information on to you guys in case you decide you want to have something 3D printed in either metal or nylon. Or, or if you go up to their website, you'll see they can just work in almost any material you can ask for, including CNC services, which I'm thinking about having them do a project on that too, so we can just find out what that's like. But my point is, uh, send the actual dimensions. For example, the shaft of this uh, stepper motor is 5 millimeter. The... Uh, hole that I have designed into this is 5.2 because I wanted uh, to make allowances for the filament on my uh, Bamboo Labs printer in this case, but it wouldn't have mattered which one of my printers I use. I would have oversized it probably by about 0.2 just to make sure that I could get the part on. So if you're going to have them make the part with their professional equipment, send the exact size you want because they're going to send you back the exact size that you asked for. So just letting you know about that. Uh, the other place where that showed up is normally this gear sits down on this uh, fidget spinner bearing and that bearing fits in here. In the case of this 3D printed part, it just fits right in there perfect, like a glove. So that meant, I already knew before I tried it, that meant that it was going to fit a little bit looser in this one because that meant I'd oversized this hole just to make sure the bearing would fit. And in, and in fact, that is the case. The bearing drops in there and there's, there's some play that there wouldn't have been on the uh, filament 3D printed part. Well, let's make sure. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. 
Yep. Yep, no play there. So again, if you're sending them parts to have made, send them the exact size you want because the part they're going to send back to you is going to be the exact size that you want. You don't need to worry about it being off. So this part fits down on there like that. Then um, this cap part, which is two parts, it's this uh, crown gear and this base would go down there. And normally I would hold this piece on with the um, four screws, but this is going to drop off when I turn this thing over. I'm going to take it off now. But because I've got a circuit board sitting there right now, I didn't want to take the time to take the board off, undo all the wires, all that kind of stuff. We're just going to hold it. We're going to hold it in place with just two screws for the sake of this demonstration of the gears. Or maybe even just one screw. No, I better put two in to make sure that it's even halfway centered with where it's supposed to be. Okay, we'll put those two in and call it good. There we go. All right. And let's better put this back on. So that brings us down to the, uh, the last gear. And inside the bell, all these gray parts. Any part you see is gray. It was done on the Bamboo Lab Mini. This is the white gears. The actual uh, price breakdown on the, on the white gears was the same if I ordered one, if I ordered five. So, I, so I've got two extras. This is one of the extra ones here. This is the only part that I've noticed a, a difference that I, I don't quite understand on. And that's in that the gear teeth, if the camera focuses, are a little bit more rounded than the 3D printed ones. But it's the same file that I sent them. And just to show you that it's that the file is designed that way, here it is, that same part. This is the STL file in a slicer program. But you can see that it's very clean, it's very sharp, it's not rough, not rounded. So I'm not 100% sure why that one small gear, in my mind, has a little bit less definition on the end of the teeth than any of the others. For example, this big one still has very good definition on the teeth. It is slightly different, but I would have expected that than the FDM printed one that I did. The FDM printed one seems to be a little pointier and a little bit wider down in the valley than these. The original STL for this though actually has flat tops, not pointed and not rounded, very flat. And this, this has flat tops, so it reproduced that right. I have to assume that the valley in between then is correct if the rest of it's correct. But uh, here, if I mesh them together, you can kind of see that there's a difference because that everything doesn't quite go the same. But I think it's going to be fine. It's just a difference between FDM and uh, professional equipment, I think. So, all those little gears are connected up onto the bell. And the bell should drop down in here. Like so. And then let me uh, let me plug this in. And there it is going around and around and the bit's spinning. So far so good, right? Now I do have a breakdown on some of these parts price-wise. And so on this gear, crown gear with holes, yep. So that was $9.86 for two. The price would have been the same if I'd asked for one. It's just the way it broke down. So I said, yeah, send me two. And let's see if we can find these little ones. Here they are. Again, they sent me five of these. 
and that was twelve dollars and thirty three cents to have those 3D printed in in nylon and that brings us down to the large one let's lift this off we already talked about that but this large one that's in here I don't want to pull those two screws out you know which one I'm talking about it's the one that looks like this um, that was fourteen dollars and eighty six cents and this little teeny motor gear make sure I got the right one yes I just ordered the one that was uh, seven dollars and forty cents I didn't really check on that one whether two would have been the same price or just a little bit more obviously when you order more stuff you get price breaks they go down so what I've got uh, working with them right now and I'll do a follow-up video on that well it's not a follow-up it'll be a new video would be on this bell piece because I found out I asked them while they were making these parts do they do electroplating because you know on the real Robbie the robot this piece is actually turned in brass now it looks gold but it's brass and so I'm a little concerned on what the color is going to come out like but I asked them if they did look electroplating yeah and I said well I sent them the bell file said 3d print the bell file and then uh, electroplate the whole thing and I just picked brass again I don't know that I should have said brass and the, the reason I'm concerned about that is because when you buy brass spray paint it it looks dark and more like a copper a dirty copper penny whereas if you want something that you think of as brass you have to normally buy a gold spray paint anyway we'll see what comes we'll see what they can do we'll see how smooth it is I mean this isn't a bad print I, I do all these prints on the little a1 mini and I, I do them in the lowest quality setting you know 0.2 and uh, usually fast because <laughs> I'm just testing things but uh, even at that the only real cleanup I'd have to do on this one was right there there's the seam where everything started and stopped person would have to sand or putty that down but you can feel the fine lines on here so it'll be interesting to see what the professionally made one turns out feeling and looking like that's plated and printed and all that kind of stuff and what we can learn about uh, color matching and stuff like that but if you've ever wanted parts electroplated they do it and they can I think the only trouble might be and it isn't a trouble the only thing is going to be figuring out um, colors maybe we'd have to send them samples I don't know we're gonna find out because that's upcoming and uh, I'm in communications with them um, about CNC because they do CNC parts too and you know how the uh, very top part of this whole project on Robbie right up here would be a part that looks like this now, this is just spray painted and this is just printed on this printer in fact each one of these just is a separate piece and kind of stacked together and uh, obviously normally you would want this turned just turned in aluminum and it has a larger hole here where the lamp socket goes down and a smaller hole here where it's gonna mount onto the rod and, and in fact there's the uh, 440 set screw right there to lock it in place once it's there so I'm communicating on them with them right now to find out whether they're interested in uh, allowing me to test their CNC services on this part and we'll find out what the story is with that possibly if it's not too expensive and they don't want to cover it then I'll probably just pay for it and do it if it's real expensive and they won't do it then we probably won't find out because I don't have the money but um, I think that's it I'll put links to PCB way in the description box down below I'll try to remember to put links to uh, the other projects I've done with them the printed circuit board the clear um, resin printed parts the flexible resin printed parts the aluminum uh, 3d printed parts and now we've got nylon 3d printed parts so let's uh, we'll keep this rolling as long as we can just learn what we can hopefully we'll hope some of you in case you ever want to do projects that take parts that maybe you can't do at home <laughs>